you follow the service on page 167. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with a responsive reading of the introit as printed in the bulletin. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who The Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provisions. I will satisfy her poor with bread. Her priests I will clothe with salvation. And her Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes care of the In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. God, 
your almighty power is made known chiefly in showing mercy. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we may be called to repentance and made partakers of your heavenly treasures. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Ezekiel in the second chapter. And he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet and I will speak to you. Then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me, set me on my feet. And I heard him who spoke to me, and he said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day, for they are impudent and stubborn children. I'm sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. As for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are a rebellious house, yet they will know that a prophet has been among them. This is the word of the Lord. Be Our epistle reading comes from 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows, such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, how he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast except in my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth. But I refrain lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Then he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things, and what wisdom is this which is given to him? that such mighty works are performed by his hands. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, Josie, Judas, and Simon? Are the, and are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. He marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. And he called the twelve to himself and began to send them out two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits. He commanded them to take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bag, no bread, no copper in their money belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. Also he said to them, in whatever place you enter a house, stay there till you depart from that place. And whoever will not receive you nor hear you, 
When you depart from there, shake off the dust under your feet as a testimony against them. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. So they went out and preached that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. This is the gospel of our Lord. and peace to you in Christ Jesus. The text is from the Old Testament reading, verse 3. And he said to me, Son of man, I'm sending you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. There ends the text. The fellow redeemed, there's a hymn in the hymnal we sing that begins with the line, 
Hark the voice of Jesus crying, who will go and work today? It's a hymn about missions, about gathering the harvest of souls that God has prepared in the world. And the hymn tells us to answer quickly when he calls, here am I, send me, send me. It sounds so inviting. We get to work for God, helping him gather souls into his kingdom. We get to carry his message of forgiveness and reconciliation into this world. The writer of the hymn sounds eager to get started. Here am I, send me, send me. What a privilege to be able to serve God by carrying his word to the world. God told Ezekiel in the Old Testament reading to do basically the same thing. But unlike the hymn writer who makes it sound like the best job ever, God's a little more realistic with Ezekiel about what this is going to be like. I'm sending you to the children of Israel. To a rebellious nation that's rebelled against me, they and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. For their impudent and stubborn children, I'm sending you to them. And you shall say to them, thus says the Lord. God made it pretty clear to Ezekiel that this message he was going to carry to, to the world it's not going to be an easy message by any means. People who would hear it were in rebellion against God. They hated God's word. They hated the people who spoke God's word. The ways of the world around them were a whole lot more interesting and more inviting than God's ways. The world's ways were fun. Ezekiel knew that God was sending him into a hornet's nest. In all likelihood, people were going to get mad at him and make fun of him and mock him, maybe even hurt him. Can you imagine having to stand alone in a room full of people who have so twisted the truth of God that right is wrong and wrong to God is right to them? Can you imagine what they would say to you, how they would yell at you, how they'd accuse you of being a, a hater, an enemy of humanity if you spoke God's word in such a place? You know, actually, you don't have to imagine it at all. That's exactly the world we live in today. This world we live in, this, this is Sodom and Gomorrah. There were literally parades in the streets. There are every year celebrating sexual perversity. Flying the colors of the rainbow, which was a symbol God gave to his people about his covenant of mercy and grace. Taking a holy symbol like that and using it for a symbol celebrating perversity. After the Supreme Court decision a couple of weeks ago, the enemies of God were literally dancing in the streets celebrating their newfound government acceptance for their sexual perversion. An activity that God's word literally calls an abomination. People are celebrating as if it's the best thing they've ever, ever had. And even so-called Christian denominations are embracing this disobedience to God, saying that, it's a good thing that they're accepting of all people, that love is love, and after all, Jesus is all about love. It sounds great, except for the fact that it's a lie. Oh, God is love, that's true. But his love is also righteous, and holy, and pure. God's love draws a line between sin and righteousness. And he calls people away from sin into his righteousness. God is love. But God will also judge the wicked and those who reject his word. See, that's the world into which God has called you and told you to go and speak his word. This isn't the romantic, hopeful picture of the hymn writer who says, here am I, send me, send me. This is the more realistic picture of Ezekiel and the other prophets who probably thought in their heart at least, why doesn't God send somebody else? 
God was painfully truthful with Ezekiel about his prospects for success. God said, as for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they're a rebellious house, at least they'll know there was a prophet among them. People weren't going to listen to Ezekiel. Oh, a handful of people did. The masses, though, wouldn't. But Ezekiel, he wasn't supposed to worry about the reaction of the people. He was to speak what God told him to speak and let God worry about the results. God knew from the beginning that the majority would refuse his word and would continue to do what they were doing with the approval of the masses around them. For they are a rebellious house, God says. But even knowing that success was going to be extremely limited, God still wanted Ezekiel to get out there and speak his truth. Why? What's the point when you know it's going to end in failure? The point is that at least they will know a prophet has been among them. They will know. Even if it isn't until Judgment Day, they will know God tried to speak sense into them. Their judgment is certainly not God's fault. He made the effort to turn them around. He tried, but they chose to ignore it and close their ears to his truth. Now, as terrible a picture as this paints of the world we live in, it paints an incredible picture of the nature of God's love and grace. It shows us God doesn't just stop because the object of his compassion won't love him back. God pursues even the godless and the wicked. God wants to forgive and reconcile those who shun him. His grace is broad enough. His love is deep enough that he is willing to endure even being pushed away. What depths there is to the love of God that he who deserves the world's undying devotion would permit himself to face the world's undying hatred. Even as the voices of evil rise up against God and try and drown out the voices of those who speak his word, God is still there. His word is still being spoken, even if it's just in a whisper word is there. And it's calling out to this world, my son died for you. His righteousness is there to cover your unrighteousness. I want to save you. I want to fill you with every heavenly blessing. That's the word God called out of the darkness and spoke to us. He called to us even when we were his enemies and he said, I forgive you. And that word of mercy is the very thing that breaks through the sin that's inherent in all of us week after week. He comes to us in our rebellion, in our wanting to be accepted by the world around us, and he makes us his reconciled children. I mean, we, swimming in this sea of humanity, God has singled out and made his own. And he did it not because we're more special or we're more deserving than anybody else. He did it because he is a loving God who chose to pursue us with his everlasting blessings. The fact that God is willing to reach out in this world anymore is a testimony to his character and the infinite grace and mercy that drives him. Now, thankfully, none of us has been called upon to bear the burden that Ezekiel had to bear. The Bible doesn't tell us how Ezekiel ultimately died. But there is an oral tradition about his death that suggests Ezekiel was killed by the very Israelites he was trying to call away from sin. And they murdered him because they didn't like what he said. And I don't doubt that's true. But even though we have not been called upon by God to be Ezekiel, we have been called upon by God to 
carry the image of his son into this world. Jesus is within us. He has bound us to his truth. And we are to bring him into the world on a number of different levels. We are to speak up and speak his word, even when the world doesn't want to hear it. Even when the world is lauding its lies and calling evil good, we are to speak God's truth in love. And let them hear what the true message of God's holiness is. And we are also supposed to be true to God in our own personal lives. Turning away from the things that God condemns. Embracing the life of chastity and purity that's manifest in Christ. I mean, for us, things like chastity and kindness, patience and self-control, these aren't just words. This is the nature of our life as children of Christ. This is the mark of who we are bearing Christ's image within us. And as we live these things out in the world, people will see Jesus in us. They'll see what Jesus can do in a sinner's heart. And we will also be carriers of God's truth simply in the mercy and the forgiveness we show to those around us, not just to our friends either, but to our enemies shocks the world when they see Christ's forgiveness at work. That's the one thing the world can't just condemn as being evil. We saw, saw a glimpse of this a couple of weeks ago after that mass shooting in South Carolina. There, Christians in that church proclaimed Christ's grace in the world. They were being interviewed by several reporters and a number of the congregation members said that they forgave this man. They forgave him for, for killing their father and their mother, their sister. In the darkness of murderous hate, the forgiveness of Christ shined out from the witness of these people. Now granted, we are a sinful people and we do live in ways that don't always reflect the glory of Christ. But we dare never forget that we are still his children. And he does purge our sins away and give us a new life and a new witness in this world. Whether we recognize it or not, we are walking, talking billboards of Christ's grace. Not that we have a personal holiness that's any better than the rest of the world, because we don't but we are examples of what God's grace does. We are a forgiven people, so we forgive. God is kind to us and treats us better than we deserve, so we're kind to others. God loved us when we were his enemies, so we love our enemies. God's truth directs us in his word, so we speak his truth in the world without embarrassment or shame. We live as redeemed children of the Most High because Jesus has saved us from this world. But never ever does he say that that means the world is going to be happy about it. Just the opposite. Jesus warns us that being saved means difficulties. In fact, he says to us pretty much the same thing he said to the apostles in the reading today. Jesus told them, if they will not receive you or hear you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave them as a testimony against them. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Bearing Christ into this world is our Christian duty. Speaking the truth that has saved us is our Christian obligation. But whether the world hears it or whether they reject it is ultimately not our concern. God the Holy Spirit will work through our humble and our imperfect witness, and he will reach out with the love of God 
even to a world that's set against him. Jesus has promised us his word will not return to him void, but it will accomplish the purpose for which he sent it. It will save and it will refresh all those whom the Holy Spirit brings to repentance. And it will judge and condemn all those who continue in the filth of their sins. By God's grace, by his ongoing constant forgiveness, he speaks his life into us. So may he help us bear Christ into the world faithfully. For Jesus' sake, amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the confession of our faith. The words of the Nicene Creed on page 174. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, the God of not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge all the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and our solid church. I acknowledge my baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead. pray. Almighty God, grant us courage and faith to bring the message of Christ into our world. Keep us from being discouraged when our efforts yield little. Increase among your people a willing boldness to proclaim repentance and forgiveness, confident that the Holy Spirit is at work in your word. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, you are the author of life. You bring life forth from the womb and preserve it to us in old age. Help us to defend the weak and the vulnerable among us. Preserve the unborn and the aged and all on whose lives the world places little value. Give your people compassion and love to put others before themselves that Christ might be seen through our humble actions. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Gracious Father, we pray you bless those who face special circumstances this day. Be with Richard Winter as he recovers in the hospital. Grant him health and healing, blessing him not only in body, but in his spirit as well as he looks to you for deliverance and trusts in your ongoing care. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. God of our salvation, many who bear the name of Jesus receive no honor or kindness. Grant to those who suffer for your truth, strength, and patience. Bear them up as they endure insults and persecutions for your sake. Assure them that your grace is sufficient and your power is made perfect in their weakness. Confound the efforts of all who do them harm and grant to them and to all of us a steadfast faith even unto death. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for the love and forgiveness you have shown us. You fill our fields with crops and our shelves with food. You grant us family and friends and people to love us. Help us to always be aware that every gift is from your hand 
and that without you we have nothing. And as you give us thankfulness, give us also generosity, that we might be willing to use what you have given to the help and care of those who have little. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying.
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. For you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Thank you.